All right, Shello, um, thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to get started today. Um, don't forget, you can leave comments in the bottom. If not, you can reach me at goldenisraelite at gmail.com. Uh, we do accept phone calls. Uh, when the sun goes down, uh, we're not talking to any strangers. Um, I like to encourage people that are uh, older than me older than 50 uh, to call. I have had a lot of phone calls from uh, mature consenting adults uh, in their 50s and 60s and interesting conversations that have taken place. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how people feel uh, when they watch the video, but, you know, um, everybody's got their own reasons, right? So, here for you spiritually. I am not your lawyer. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Amish, the Mennonite, and we're going to look over some of the Mormonism uh, briefly. Um, we exist off of donations. Your help. Uh, without your help, there is... There's no way we can do these broadcasts. Uh, we have t-shirts available from $25 to $100 in a package. Uh, whatever you are interested in. So, without waiting, we're going to look at the Amish. Now, again, um, these Amish, these Mennonites, these... Mormons, they are not Israelites, they are not your people. Why would the children of the Bible have to learn about the law or about their creator from other nations? Does that even make sense? Uh, and I say that because when I look at people trying to teach you history or Bibliology, knowing that they're most likely of the races that you are not supposed to be acquainted with in the first place, then your soul's in jeopardy. And because that you clearly want to keep yourself in a broad form of ignorance, you don't even know when you're killing yourself. So, when we look at the Amish, Amish. Uh, we're going to just go over to etymology and we're going to be told... A Swiss Mennonite preacher who found the sect. So the Amish are actually a sect. A sect of the Mennonites. The surname is a contradiction of High German Am Batman title of an official in the German Swiss cantons from Ambet, office. A Celtic borrowing, of course, it's a borrowing, right? Related to the beginning of ambassador, ambassador plus, right, plus man, or AMT plus man, right? Also spelled omish, as in the word omission, right? Which reflects the pronunciation in Pennsylvania German dialect. As a noun, 1884, early names, other early names for the sect were the Ammanite. So they insist on calling themselves man, man. Right? So they're an upland Mennonite. So, what does this mean? It just truly means they're actually of the Mennonites and they have branched off. That's really all it means. Now, when you look at Amish, it comes from Amishk. Uh, Ishk. Amishk. So, this is why they call themselves a man because of their leader. A Mennonite who separated. So, when we look at the Mennonites, Mennonites, right? 
And again, when you look at this one, it's again, a man, right? He's a man and I. So, many nights. Me no Simmons. And it gives you a date of the finding. Whether the date is true or not, it is it's moot to me. Because when you go into the Mennonites and you just type in Scathian, and you see the most of these search results have nothing to do, or I would think they had nothing to do with what I typed in. But, if, yeah. All right. Genealogies, Mennonite History Society of the Sha. Ska, the Saskawachan, Saskawachan, Scathian culture of horsemen, known for their ruling over peoples, that's called oppression, where they lived, used curved swords like knives for hand combat. So, right away, they're telling you the, main, the Mennonites are scathians and what they did in the past was they oppressed people so this isn't going to be some wild ride it's very fast we get there quick books ukraine remember uh miko police israelis are ukrainians so when we go back here to Mennonites, right? What does it say? Ukrainians, right? The brat, brat, brat it, travel. They're just brats, right? Watch over the dead. Scathian stone grandmothers were placed on below. The empress assigned land to large groups of Swiss Mennonites. Right? So, it's, it's not that hard. It's not that hard at all. Every time I type in Scathian and Mennonite, look at what comes back, right? Voluntary Hellenization and conversion of what? Of the Scathians into what? Christians, Mennonites, right? Miko Paled, Israelis are Ukrainians. So just put in here, right? What does he say? No... Israelis are ancient. Israel. Right? So, all we gotta do is take that, copy that, and we're gonna open another Google. Open another Google. See, it should come up right here, all right? But it's just one of those days. The computer doesn't want to work right, so. I'm surprised it's moving so fast since we're recording. But you get what you get, right? So, you know how long it took me to remember this guy's name? This is Miko Plead, right? And you're looking for the one. No Jews are Israelite descendants. What does, he, what does he say? He tells you that they are what? <laughs> it's right here. They're Ukrainian. Ukraine. So now you have actors that are from the Ukraine and they pretend to be Amish, pretend to be Mennonites, pretend to be Christians when they're not. They're just oppressors. The history of them is oppression, ruling over people from horseback. All right? So. <clears throat> so Mennonite Scathians, right? 
and you go into this and it says the Mennonite church history. All right, the following table shows how the 12 divided the field and how they fulfilled the Great Commission. No modern missionary society has done so well in such a short time. Remember, Abraham, thrown into a furnace, lived because he what? Worshiped God. Right? Right. Daniel, thrown in a lion's den. Lived. Daniel, thrown in a furnace. Lived. James, preaching Jesus, got his head cut off. Philip, preaching Jesus, where it filled a labor scathia, he got stoned to death. James the Lesser, right? Because there's a bunch of James. He was cast down from the temple. He was thrown off the top of a fucking building. Then stoned. Abraham, thrown in a furnace, lived. Daniel, thrown in a furnace, lived. Peter, preaching Jesus, crucified, head Downward, upside down. That's that satanic shit, right? Preaching Jesus. Daniel, thrown in the lion's den. Lived. Andrew. He was what? With the scathians. That's his field of freaking labor, right? Crucified. You got hung up like a barbarian. Lived while on the cross. Three days. Hey, he survived three days. Bleeding everywhere. Daniel, lion's den. How many lions doesn't matter? Lived. Starving lions. Entertain me. Put on a show. Rip him to shreds. The lions just rolled around like fucking cats. Meow. Pet me, Daniel. Meow. Okay. Abraham, sacrifice Isaac to me lived but bartholomew or nathaniel whatever we want to call him he is crucified flayed you know what that means right you fillet a fish right so he was cut into thin strips right by persians that's black people by arabians that's arabs right that's scathians you know that scathians they ain't want to write scathia in again look how many scathians killed the fucking prophets right hey the prophet to Jesus, right? Just dis, scripples, right? Scathia, right? Right? Let's see, Pontus Galatia and Lower Asia. Um, probably had Scathians there. Andrew Scathia, right? Arabia Scathia. Don't be fooled by that. The Arabs are Iranians, right? Iranians are Scathian stock, right? Here we have Thomas died. Partha, Ethiopia, and India. Which India? The India that was over in Central America. Which Ethiopia? The Ethiopia that was in Central United States. I got the part where the Ethiopian king says, fuck it. We're leaving the promised land. I found it in a book. What happened to Thomas? St. Thomas was cast into a hot furnace and then he was stabbed with spears that's how he died abraham was thrown into a hot furnace lived daniel was thrown into a hot furnace lived meshach abidio who else was thrown into that furnace lived matthew chaldea that's arabs per that's, that's canaanite arabs persians that's shem and ethiopia look at that all them together they nailed his ass to the ground and cut his fucking head off. <laughs> Bravo! What a great show. I I'm sold on you have to worship God alone. How about you, viewer? Are you still a fucking idiot where you think that you can preach Jesus and still, what, face death and live? You're drunk. Here's all Jesus' comrades, right? Jude! Hey, Jude, they kicked your ass, right? Beaten to death. Simeon the Canaanite. Were they supposed to be affiliated with any goddamn Canaanites? No. Ha, ha. Same time and place as Jude, he was crucified. So while Jude was getting his ass kicked in the streets, they were nailing Simeon, right? Why? 
Why are they doing this to Simon? Why are they doing this to Simeon? Because he was a fucking Canaanite, and he was what? Preaching to what? Canaanites? He was in Egypt, Canaanites, Libya, Canaanites, right? Mauritania. That's the Moors! In Persia. That's niggas, right? What did they do? They nailed his ass to a cross. Why, Jude probably said, why are you doing this? So they beat the living shit out of Jude, and Jude lived no more. Right? Abraham face to face with Nimrod. You ain't shit. Your statues ain't shit. You're just an idolater. Throw him in the furnace! He lived! Didn't Jesus die? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John. John had a natural death. Right? John was so good, right? Why wasn't John taken up to heaven? Huh? He didn't have a natural death. He was what? He was thrown on an island as a prison. That's not a natural death. That's you've been imprisoned. No trees. Why didn't he build a boat? Why didn't he just chop down a tree? Just float the tree to a different shoreline. No trees. Natural death of incarceration. Hmm? We stranded him on an island with no resources. We left him sand to eat. Right? Somehow he found a way to write. Somehow nobody else on this barren island, he found a way to give his book to somebody. Right? That's what you want me to believe. Judas Iscariot, right? Pisces Iscariot, right? The actual Jews in Jerusalem, they say they hanged himself. Hmm? I betrayed a false god that claims he's in the living. I'm going to strap myself to the tree, right? Come on, man. Come on. So, you see the whole concept. Worship false god, die. Remember, nigga, we was kings. The king's image with this new god King loses land, right? Besides, the Mennonites settled in the Molosh. Mol this is Molech, right? Moloshenia. There are about 250 families who have received grants of land. What? In the governments of Jekka. Tervis, <laughs> Tervinoslav, and Tchichnigov, right? That sound like Judah, this sound like nigger. And of course, in Volina, right? On the right bank, the Moloshnia are 21 colonies of Germans. Who are the Germans? Hmm? These are what? The Scalians. So they're calling them Germans now? Okay, so if it's real Germans, they're black. But if it's white Germans, they're really what? They're from the Caucasus Mountains. They're from the territory that we call Scathia, Russia. They're Scalians. It says they're partially Protestant and partially Catholics. Forming a total number of 400... 86 families and not fewer than 500 families of immigrants from Württemberg are residing in the vicinity in expectation of receiving similar uh, privileges as have been granted other colonists. So they're colonizing Russia from Germany. The regions peopled by these colonists form the commencement of the royal country. Right, and it's there's the Russian name of the royal country, which extends ten days' journey to the eastward. 
and in the remotest ages of profane history was occupied by a division of the Scathians called the Royal blah blah blah. And this first is the same as the second, and the second is different from the first up here. So the name changed, but there is a root that stayed. I can't speak Russian, but I can see that symbols look exactly alike. On the account of the greater extent of their territory and the distinguishing excellences of their character, from the immense tumultuous, tumult means uh, uh, like a, a out, I don't want to say outbreak because that sounds like a disease. Oh boy, um, just, that'll be best for us, just get the regular definition instead of just filling in the blank. All right, loud, confused noise, especially one caused by a large mass of people, confusion or disorder. The most has favorite weapon. All right, so it says <coughs> there was a great tumult. So that could have been an earthquake, could have been anything, all right? What caused it, right, if, if they write, right? From the immense tumult forming one of the boundary marks of the Mennonite territory, or let's see, Tumulus, let's see Tumulus if, 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 I'm, if I'm understanding. Mm. Look at that. It's a row of burial mounds, right? That's what a tumulus is, right? Well, I'm glad I looked that up instead of believing it was tumult. All right, so the immense tumulus. So it's burial graves. Forming one boundary mark on the Mennonite territory, we obtain an extensive view of the country. So they climb to the top of the mounds. But with the exception of several of the colonies and a few Tartar villages, nothing modern was presented to the view. The Tumulus, however, on which we stood, a new and numerous others of an extraordinary size. Could you believe if we would have went with the word tumult? It'd be like, you know, something loud. And when we stood on the something loud, right? All right, so uh it was of numerous others an extraordinary size. So they were on giant mounds, which appear to be surround, uh, surrounding horizon, almost tempting us to conclude that this must be the spot of the sac uh, sacred among the Scalians for the internment of their kings. And you're standing on their graves. Ha, 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 ha. They must have been about 20 feet high. So you're on 20 foot high high mounds, right? And you see it saying, it's from uh, quoting Herodotus there, uh, and uh, in 200 in circumference, so 20, two, uh, 20 feet high and 200 feet in circumference. If they be indeed the identical sepulchres, their enormous appearance still bears testimony to the barbarous rites of paganism at the time, at the distant period of time. On the death of any other kings, his body was instantly embalmed, sent around to all the nations of Scathian origin, each of which in turn conveyed it in solemn uh, procession to the others till after having gone round them all, it was conveyed to the vicinity of the Gerars, where a large square pit was dug in which it was deposited not only the royal corpse, but also the golden goblets used at the royal table, uh, the ministers and the king. So when they dig our mounds up, they're expecting to find the same thing, right? The king's royal silverware, everything that the king used uh, shall be used no more. All right, so I'm going to finish this paragraph. Uh, whereas a large square was the ministers of the king, uh, his principal wife. Oh, damn, dude, that bitch is killed immediately too. All right, so huh, a lot, when he dies, a large, he's stuffed, he's ta he's embalmed, he's taken all around. A large pit is dug when everybody sees him. Uh, 
he's deposited in there not only his corpse but the golden goblet the royal table the ministers of the king would you like to be in the king's world fuck no his principal wife they're all slain his horse killed all of whom were slain on the occasion damn can you can believe that king dies his woman's got to die his horse the ministers you can't tell you can't you can't be around and tell the king the king had one testicle can't be around and tell the king's wife had this problem or that problem or, or any secrets of the kingdom everybody's got to die see how this game is played a great quantity of the earth was then heaped over the hole well you just threw a horse he just threw like 10 bodies and a horse in. Of course, you got to use a bunch of dirt. Uh, until it became an immense tumulus, a, a giant mound. And the size of which is still argument uh, by fresh as, uh, ascension of earth the following year. Oh my, that means he came up from the earth. All right, so it's Mennonites right here. April 20th, on, excuse me, on 20th, we bid farewell to the excellent Mennonites and proceed in the direction of Marple. So, what is Marple? Am I spelling that right? Mariupol. Ma. Yeah, I still spelled that wrong. Okay, Ukrainian. There you have it. It's in the Ukraine, southeast Ukraine, situated on the north coast of the Sea of Azov, at the mouth of the Kalmus River. All right, it's the tenth largest city in the Ukraine, the second largest in the Donetsk Oblast, with a got about five hundred thousand people there. <coughs> so. So they just march these people over to that cold ass. Well, look, it doesn't look that bad. So I wonder if if they're sending black people. No, 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 ah! no, 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 no. Wow, that's so funny. Doesn't that look like the, uh, wow, that red and blue, that reminds me of that, uh, that, that sh ship that was in the galaxy, uh, what's that? I want to say Harlock. It's not Harlock. One of those shows you watch as a kid, so they don't, they don't have any black people over here, right? See, they got brown skin, but there's something different. Yeah, look at that. Oh, see what's going on? See? This is Papa. This is Papa's children. See, these are Arabs. You just call them white people today. They're fucking Arabs. They're African. They do a DNA test. It says Neanderthal. It says Africa. You do a DNA test, it don't say that shit. They took your people over to Africa to die in fucking Africa. Now when you do a DNA test, they say, oh, we found some of your people dead in Africa. Right? Oh, we found some of your people in Cameroon. Oh, we found some. Their whole stock. Say the same thing. Three to five percent of you say that say 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 the same shit as there. They show these pictures with black Moors and, and and white people that look like the Moors without pigment. They show these Arabs. They show these white people that look like these Arabs without pigment. So Mormon. All right, so Mormon is just uh, a non-mystery. It is not a mystery. It's a non-mystery. Mormonism. 
does not come from one bloodline, all right? One guy found some shit and then made an announcement. And he made an announcement and then people grouped together to his form of Christianity. There is nothing that we're going to find that Mormon is some ancient word or anything like that. It does not go back as far as Mennonites and things like that. Uh, Mormonism have certain beliefs. All right. If you go into the Mormonism and we're looking for this website, it was God a giant. Uh, the Most High tells you the earth is his footstool. He tells you that he can have the appearance of a man and he can magnify himself. So, of course, God's a giant. I mean, like, if the sons of God fall to earth and their children are giants, what do you think their fathers are? I was looking for where we got this one from because, uh, you know, it states how they, it, it makes some claims about how they feel about particular gods in history. Now, this doesn't mean Mormon today believes this or that. You know, it just means that they interviewed somebody at some time and that's how they felt. Um, but it's not standing out to me. You see, if I clicked on something, it's in purple like this one, you know, um, so I'm not quite sure. Anyway, uh, we have a Mormon lawyer that changed archaeology in Mexico. Right. And now, I want you to see this real quick because just by reading this, uh, it shows us something that's very interesting. Tom, uh, Thomas Stewart Ferguson, right? This is Thomas Stewart Ferguson and what he did. He laid in his hammock, certain that he found the promised land. It had been raining five hours in his camp in tropical Mexico in January of 1948, his three campmates had long since fallen asleep. Ferguson was vibrating with excitement, eager to tell someone what he had seen. He dashed through the downpour to retrieve paper from a supply bag, ensconed in his hammock cocoon of a mosquito netting. He clicked on his flashlight and began to write a letter home. He discovered a very great city where the heart of bountiful land ferguson wrote according to the book of mormon bountiful was the first areas settled by nephites so he felt he found the home of the nephites the ancient people who supposedly sailed from israel to the americas around 600 bce so centuries later according to scripture uh Jesus appeared to the Nephites in the same, the Nephites, the ones you call the bad guys. Jesus appeared to, to your bad guys. Get the hell out of here. Jesus appeared to the Nephites in the same region after his resurrection. Right? Okay. Oh, what does the Old Testament say about man living twice? So, again, if God wanted Jesus to live, God would have never let Jesus die. This is just very rational, considering what's written in the Old Testament. This isn't about someone's faith. This is about a great lie. Mormons, like Ferguson, were certain that these events had happened in ancient Americas, but debate, debated, debates raged over exactly how sacred lands mapped into real-world geography. The Book of Mormon only gave scattered clues, speaking of a narrow isthmus, a river called Sidon, and the lands to the north and south occupied by the Nephites and their enemies, the Lamanites, right? Okay, so years after, oh, sorry, the Lamanites were the dark-skinned bad Indians, right? Fucking racist bastards, right? But these are land grabbers, and they come from a whole different bloodline, and they do what? They what? Where are the Lamanites today? Right, where are the Nephites today? Oh, they killed each other. The last two stood across from each other, shooting arrows at each and they both hit each other and they both died, and then we found their belongs. Shut the hell up. 
all the other American stories of the eradication of the indigenous people, including the Mormon goddamn battalion going down to the place this man is at and doing what to the natives? Slaughter! So, you know, their whole story is a lie. Just think. These guys come over and claim, we found all this Christian stuff. It's really Israelite stuff, but they push it over to Christianity, just like everything else has been. So why wouldn't all the Christians say, oh, hell, because yeah, they lived at the time and they knew what the, they did to those people. Just because you were coming to America didn't mean that you came to kill everybody. The problem is, is when people gave you stuff. Hey, let me scroll back here, right? And I want to go to the Mennonite stuff again, right? And when we look at the Mennonite stuff, what'd that book say? Hold on. It said they gave him shit, right? Check this out. It said it right here. They did what? 500 families Im immigrated. Now, this is one location. Now, how did all these people immigrate to the United States? Now, this is how they did it, right? They got land grants. Now, who gave them land grants? Well, they're people, right? They're governments. There were 250 families who received land grants. So they're getting land grants to go move on other people's shit. This motherfucker goes to somebody's land and stands right on the king's fucking grave. And then decides to look down and start describing it and saying, oh, this is probably their king. Why he's still standing on his goddamn grave. That's the heart and mind of somebody that wrote this book whenever this motherfucker was published. Now think about the person that came and joined. Hey, let's, let's, let's type this in. All right? Mormon battalion. You don't come to a land, say you found some shit, but then you form a fucking army and your army joins the United States Army and did what? You went down and fought the Mexican War? But that's in 46 through 48. Right? In the very next year, where is this, this dude at again? Right? In the very next year. Right? Nope. Still 1948. So they're fighting a Mexican war. And these guys are like, hey, let's go investigate fucking archaeology sites. We discovered a great city, the heart of Bountiful. The city of the Nephites, ancient people who supposedly sailed from Israel to America. Mormons like Ferguson were certain that these events happened in ancient America, but debates raised over exactly how their sacred lands mapped into real world geography. The Book of Mormon only gives scattered clues, speaking of narrow isthmuses and a river called Sidon. Now remember, Sidon. Remember who Sidon is, right? Sidon is Canaan. So, let's see. Archaeologists come over and they're like, Oh, the Canaanites are in Central America? Come on, people. How many times have I told you the Canaanites were in California? They were all over the West. Moses is told to what? Go and take the land from the Canaanites. After years of studying maps, Mormon culture, and Spanish chronicles, Ferguson concluded that the Book of Mormon took place around the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, the narrowest part of Mexico. He had come to the jungles of Campeche, northeast of the Isthmus, to find proof. Now, that's funny, because when we get into this Isthmus, and they show where it's at, it is the later place of the Panama Canal. Right? So, when we look at the River Sidon, 
we have people that think, well, first they type in the Riverside, and, and as I'm typing it in, Mississippi comes up, right? Then you get Santa Rosa Zarahemla. Remember, we had the, we said, suggested, we all look at the Zarahemla video. Okay, so here it says, could Mississippi have been the Riverside? And, you know, and this isn't something that comes up once or twice. This is something that comes up over and over. Again, we're supposed to be looking down at the Panama Canal right now, but when we put this in, man, Mississippi keeps coming up over and over because they're telling you the Nephite territory is Mississippi. They're saying, I don't give a shit what this guy says. He's got his own opinion. Everybody else with an opinion says Mississippi. Now, while we're arguing, is the Mississippi, the Euphrates, the people of the past that didn't have the lies in their way, they're saying, no, the Mississippi is probably the Sidon. So if the Mississippi is a Sidon, that would make Phoenicia right over there. So when we're listening, I mean, when we're reading and say, they're talking to the Egypt, Egypt on one end, right? So put Egypt further up where they say, right? What do they call it? No, not that rat. Oh, look, they got a pyramid, too. All right. Wadsworth, Illinois. Is that fake or is that real? Oh, no. Pyramid, gold pyramid house fire. Damn. In Wadsworth. We have a Wadsworth here. Damn, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Damn. Damn. Okay, so here's a little Egypt. They finally want us to show. And right, the land between two rivers and all that good stuff. St. Louis right there, right? Illinois, next to Illinois, Indianapolis, next to there, right? Hidden inside of there is a polis. It's Indian polis. What is a polis? Right? We'll just type it in real quick. We'll say polis. All right. Do you mean is a city? or state in ancient Greece, right? And let's say we have Ohio Polis, right? I don't know what it's called. It's by Dayton, I know that much. No, it's like by Cincinnati. I don't know, it's, it's kind of somewhere in between. Uh, it's a city, Ohio City Polis at the end of it. Uh, Demopolis right florida and polis right in brazil you got galapolis in ohio you know you're not gonna tell me the one in ohio here you got galapolis in ohio is chartered village right there's another polis in ohio i don't think that's what it is all right uh, again and then you see what the root word is gal like galatians all right so don't be fooled all right so you know you have mini it's my son's nickname Minius, we call them mini. So you have Minneapolis, right? These are Greek states, bro. You just saw the definition. You have Indian Apolis, right? These are Greek cities, all right? Stop acting foolish. You know what it means. We live in a time they're trying to change the definitions so you can't see it anymore, all right? All right, so again, people say, "Oh, Zarahemla and the Mississippi." So when you go to the Mississippi and they, what's uh, what do they call it? Pleasant Mount Pleasant, Zarahemla. That's what the that's what the old people are trying to tell you. River Sidon flows north. This is what they want to tell you. It flows north, right? So. They say is the Mississippi, the river side on again, no, no matter what, it keeps coming up as the Mississippi. When I'm trying to find this guy, his fucking evidence, right? Ferguson, they're like, nah, I don't see it, right? So they say, if you type in river side and flows north, they say Mississippi.
books of Mormon evidence. So they'll do books on, on the evidence, but they won't have a straight up Mormon book that'll say that. Mormon book of the promised land. All these people know this is the promised land. You the only one that don't know it's the promised land. Just because you look at your white friend Bob and say, Bob, is this the promised land? Bob is doing good here. Bob had to eat fucking sand, crickets. He had to sleep with Neanderthals just to get out of Africa. He's going to look at you and say, fuck no, this ain't the promised land. And you're going to believe him. Why? Because something told you to trust Bob over God. Something told you to trust Bob over Lex Will. Something told you to trust in the wrong shit. Because you didn't want to use your God-given senses. You have eyes to see, ears to hear, and you walk around like the monkeys. Now, You've heard it before. Blind, deaf, dumb. People try to be polite and say moot or mute. No, it's fucking stupid. It's pure stupidity. What do they show? Now, let me ask you a question. No. This motherfucker's leading the way. These dumbasses are doing anything they say. This motherfucker's leading the way. These dumbasses will do anything they say. All together! These dumbasses lead the way. These dumbasses do anything they say. Come on. You don't want to think for your fucking self. That's why you're watching Canaanites fucking tell you about your past. They live on the beach where you used to live and they make videos directly to you. They say, now you people were slaughtered. And when they get to the, the end of their video, they say, we shall rise. Motherfucker, they are the descendant of that which destroyed you. Preaching that they are you. Only until they're questioned do they start to clean up their act, but still tell they still tell their goal to fucking lead you right off the cliff. Look at your drop. Stealing information. Freemason brand burned into his arm. Look at your Camaro, who's in love with Drop. Not your blood telling you you're his people. Telling you his people destroyed your people. Do you think his people watch his videos about you? Do you think his people are offended that he makes videos towards you? It doesn't matter. What does the Most High think? If the Most High says, if you're with a Moabite, you're not going to come to heaven. If you're with a Canaanite, you're not going to come to heaven. And you sit here and everything that you know about history and you know about God is from Moabites and Canaanites and sell out Hebrews that have brands on their arms. You live in squalor, they have videos filmed in front of swimming pools. You can't get a job, they tell you they will walk out of a good paying job because it is suffocating their soul. Showing you pictures you've never seen because you're not a Freemason. Reading you books in Spanish that you can't understand because you're not the oppressor. Claiming places are where they aren't and leaving out the most high's work.
telling you pyramids are Babylonian structures, but no evidence it's been destroyed from above. I mean, literally, this guy's got a pyramid to telling you uh, 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 Kolula is, is, is Mount Babel. But when you go to the top of Kolula, the pyramid is finished. It has not been destroyed. It's not been broken. Just a liar. And you feed him like you feed the rest. Because this is what they fight for. They fight for you. And you, you willingly give yourselves over to them. Dane Calloway, how many videos show somebody complaining he stole their information? What is the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not intellectually steal? Hmm? You know they want to put it up, right? Always being led. They don't have any problems dealing with you. No problems at all dealing with you. Want to know why? Because you don't know how to listen. Somebody tell you, read your own book. You won't do it. Somebody tell you, study yourself. You studying yourself is opening up somebody else's goddamn video. Always looking for somebody to blame. The one to blame has been leading you. You accepted foul leadership. Now you're mad. Because you invested so much. And at the end of the day, they still treat you like what? Like what? That's how they treat you. Hmm? That's how they treat you. Think about it, because tomorrow, all this is gone. Everybody's going to go home. And you're going to try to come home, and there ain't no record of your participation. But there's plenty of records of your participation to people who tried to deceive all. 